Coffee Hound Creatives presents Another Day in the Death Watch Extraction Based on the Fantasy Flight role playing game Death Watch The inside of the Valkyrie was strangely quiet. Normally, the soldiers inside the VTOL personnel carrier would be talking, joking about each other's hygiene, laughing over a quick low stick, taking their minds off the mission ahead. There was plenty of action to be had in the near future, but not when the Inquisitor was in the Valkyrie. Under her calm glare, no one relaxed. They barely moved. The only sounds heard in the cramped conditions were the engines, the occasional checking of armor and auto guns, perhaps a whispered prayer to the Emperor. The woman dressed in the black trench coat wasn't imposing through her size. She was, in fact, rather short. Her station as one of the Emperor's watchmen, however, was reason enough not to draw her ire. A minuscule beep. The woman raised her left arm to her ear. This is Contreus, she said in her flat alto. Inquisitor, came the voice, barely decipherable with death and gravel. We are in position, awaiting your signal. Affirmative, man-at-arms, she replied. She depressed a rune on the bulkhead of the Valkyrie. Pilot, she called. How close is our target? We're within a click of the LZ, Inquisitor, the pilot answered. T minus five minutes. The Inquisitor nodded to herself and touched the Vox piece in her ear again. You are free to engage Astartes. Ave Imperator. Awe, Inquisitor. <clears throat> it's about time the Hag gave us leave to attack. Wolfric, I don't think I need to mention how disrespectful that phrase is. I'm not sure what you mean, Ezekiel. Please, enlighten me to- That's enough from both of you, Man-at-Arms Gunther said, cutting off his fellow Death Watch brethren. Ever since the kill team first formed, Wolfric and Ezekiel were at each other's throats. Let alone the fact that they were from Astartes chapters that had a historic rivalry, but the former was rather lax when it came to any sort of formality. Ezekiel had been perturbed by that since they laid eyes on each other. Even now, they both sat together, two dozen meters away from the squad leader's position in the jungle blind, awaiting his order to lay down suppressive fire on the guards of the nearby compound. Navare, Astrobale, Gunther said in the Vox Channel. Have you gone through your administrations? Affirmative, man-at-arms, the emotionless voice of Navare replied. The machine spirit of Astromel's sarcophagus is eager to destroy the enemies of man once again. As am I, Astromel said. The excitement in the Blood Angel's modulated voice would have made lesser men's blood curdle. Gunther nodded to himself. The kill team was ready. He recalled the overlay in his visor. He took note of the compound, a small estate with a modest domicile, barracks, and landing pad for small voidcraft. His space marines were facing the front of the compound's walls, where four guards with what looked like hell guns were patrolling. Once the Long Fang started laying down fire with his heavy bolter, the rest of the traitor's guards would come out. Ezekiel would join with his storm bolter. Meanwhile, he and Navare would come in from the flank, Sword and power axe brandished to wipe away the heretic filth. Astromail need only wait his turn. Proceed, Wolfric. Inquisitor! Mob! The panic crackle over the Vox made Mackenzie Yaws, Inquisitor of the Ordo Xenos, turn her gaze from her data slate with alarm. The slender man dressed in formal robes, standing at his post in the small yet palatial dining room, caught her eyes with equal alarm. What is it, Sergeant? Mackenzie asked. We've got heavy bolts of fire at the front gate. Came out of nowhere, by the throne. Status? Yaz knocked her wine glass with the force of her shooting up from her chair. Three died before we The box crackled as bolter fire came through, 
along with the muffled screams of dying men. I'm pinned down with a squad of five troopers. The best of the platoon is gearing up. Mackenzie turned to her butler. He nodded and began speaking into a vox beat on his sleeve. Meanwhile, she strode to the decanter table and depressed a rune on the wall. The decorative wall began to whir, flipping over to reveal a wall filled with elegantly embossed pistols. Mackenzie snatched a large revolver and began loading it. Who's shooting, Sergeant? She asked. Have we identified them? Not yet, Inquisitor. We just got into cover, but I'm about to call in the Sentinels to flank them. Will they- By the throne! What is it, Sergeant? All that answered back was a scream and the scratch of a Vox channel being cut. Mackenzie cursed, slamming the cylinder back into her revolver. Mom? The calm baritone voice of her butler said. Yes, Nathaniel? The units have been activated. Thank you, Nathaniel. Send them out with utmost haste. By the throne! Gunther slashed down with his power sword just as the traitor uttered his blasphemous words. One who served under a heretical inquisitor would call upon the emperor. It disgusted him. The entire squad of stormtroopers that had stuck themselves behind the stand bags followed suit, screaming profanity as they shot their hell guns at the Titanic Space Marine in black Terminator armor that seemingly appeared from nowhere. All of it in vain, as he raised his storm shield and walked over the sandbags with measured calm. Once close, he roared in his graveled voice, By Polonius! He raised his sword, and with a single swipe, two stormtroopers were sent flying meters away. Another step, another strike. Four halves of mortal men lay at his feet. Gunther looked at the final trooper whose hell gun was malfunctioning. He was desperately hitting at trying to will the machine spirit of the weapon to cooperate. The veteran Astartes took another step forward. The trooper jerked up. So dies the heretic scum, Gunther muttered, thrusting forward and impaling the mortal's chest. He gurgled in alarm, slid off of the blade, and lay still on the grass of their sandbag bunker. Gunther, came Ezekiel's voice over the vox. Speak, he replied. The rest of the guard detail is rushing out of the barracks, twenty in total. I could continue firing, Gunther, Wolfric said. The senior marine could almost hear the space wolf grinning. I still have ammunition to burn. Gunther turned around to see Navarre coming from the other bunker across from him. The tech marine dislodged his spear-shaped axe with both his hands from the body of a stormtrooper one server arm raising itself and auto-cocking the bolt pistol attached to it. The man-at-arms grinned. Navarre may be a tech marine, but he was still a black Templar. Gunther knew he itched for battle. No, Wolfric, he said. I think it's Navarre's turn to bring the Emperor's justice. The two of you advance. Keep an eye out for those sentinels. Affirmative, Ezekiel replied. Finally, Navarre intoned. Inside the Valkyrie, the glaring red light turned to green. One minute to drop, Inquisitor, the pilot reported. Good hunting. Thank you, pilot, the woman in the black trench coat replied. She rose, and the stormtroopers also stood up to ready themselves. She looked to her soldiers, one human eye and one optical augment glaring at them. Remember... She said. Yours is to be captured, not killed. You are free to purge anyone else in her service. Ave Imperator! Ave! They rang out in unison. The drop doors began to open, and she turned to look down at the battlefield. By the Omnissiah! Gunther heard the sickening crunch that followed Navarre's war cry. Another traitorous mortal gone. No matter, he was concerned with a squad of five enemies that had hidden themselves behind a barrier and were shooting him with their hell guns. The red lances of rapid-fire lasers shot forth, pounding into the black storm shield Gunther raised up. Merely an annoyance. He began to trudge in their direction, adjusting the vox output in his suit to maximum. Repent, heretics! The old marine bellowed, 
his grating voice unpleasant to normal men. You walk in the path of darkness thanks to a false inquisitor, one who would seek to corrupt the Imperium's holy soul with the taint of Xenos' filth. Lay down your weapons, and you may yet find salvation. Three of the men behind the barricade covered their ears from the horrid noise. One refused to lay down his arms, but his shots went wide as a comrade fell on him. The final one responded to Gunther's terms by standing up, unpinning a grenade, and throwing it towards the Terminator. The Marine didn't hesitate. He depressed the power rune on his sword, ready to swing, and waited for the grenade to reach him. Once it did, the men-at-arms swatted at the projectile with such force, rocketing it back towards the foolish guard that refused the surrender. It detonated mere centimeters from his face. The other four didn't move, the shrapnel taking its toll on them as well. Before he could turn to see who else to attack, Ezekiel's voice was on the Vox. Gunther, the Sentinels are inbound. Affirmative. Astromail, are you in position? Yes, brother. Remove them. Where are you, Gerald? Corporal Gerald Henson clenched his teeth as he piloted his scout sentinel over a pile of dead logs. He checked his orientation screen. Almost there, Inquisitor! You were almost here a minute ago! We have Death Watch Marines wrecking havoc on the base! Throne help you if you don't get here in the next five seconds! Yes, Inquisitor! He closed the channel. Death Watch? Here? If that was so, it sounded like Yaw's connections had finally been discovered. That means they were here to get more information. That meant... That meant home. Gerald hit a rune. Come on, Peter! He said to his squad mate over the Vox. The Inquisition knows about home! Let's... Emperor's balls! As he had turned to look for his squad mate, he saw a flash of black, and a torrent of sparks light up the dark jungle. Gerald quickly turned around, expecting to have seen his partner wrecked across a tree. Instead, he turned to see a bulky machine walker, tossing his former comrade to the ground like a limp corpse. It about faced on its stubby legs, the smokestacks on the top of the boxy machine spewing black gas, its twin claws spinning in anticipation for more carnage. Death to the impure! It cried out in a deep, machine-enhanced voice, and charged. Gerald screamed inside his cockpit, paralyzed in fear, his hand in a death grip on the multi-laser's control. As the superheated beams lanced forth, they impacted against the advancing metal monster without stopping its onslaught. Gerald saw a claw raise itself up, saw it speed towards his cockpit. Sentinel walkers neutralize meant at arms, Astromel said calmly. Affirmative, Gunther said. He switched Vox channels. Inquisitor Contreus, it seems the field is clear. You may descend. Thank you, Astartes, Contreus replied. Advance to the domicile. Yours should be inside. Indeed. Ezekiel, Wolfric, status. We're in sight of the gate now, Gunther, Wolfric responded. I can hear Astromail coming through the woods as well. We'll be able to... Gunther! Ezekiel bellowed. Behind you! The veteran Astartes didn't hesitate, whirling with his blade at whatever the librarian sensed behind him. While he had reflexes honed from centuries of close combat, the titanic power armor slowed him down, allowing the shimmering figure behind him to somersault away. The shadowy form landed with feline poise, the form-fitting Camo Leolin's suit coalescing into a female assassin wielding two long blades. The mask at war hit her face, the visage a completely blank slate. Contact, Gunther said in the Vox. Death cult assassins, be advised. There are at least three, Ezekiel added. I can sense their presence. My team will continue into the manse, Astartes. Contreus piped in. Handle the assassins. Affirmative, Gunther noted. Just deal with the assassins. No problem.
Units Primus, Secundus and Tarsus have engaged the Death Watch Inquisitor. Yoss's butler informed her. All stormtroopers from the barracks are dead, and the Sentinels have yet to report back. I am assuming they are also lost. The household guards are setting up a barricade as we speak. By the throne world. Mackenzie cursed. She put her arm through the second sleeve of her carapace-lined robe as the two of them rushed to the hurriedly constructed barricade. Death Watch coming in and shooting up her base? Someone would hang for this. Nathaniel, go to the choir and send a distress signal to the library. Tell them what is happening and demand justice for this travesty. As you wish. Nathaniel threw himself over Yaws as they were thrown to the floor. Her world was swimming, ringing with dissonant bells. Nothing but dust and pain. Uh, a new sound. Engines? Yes, engines and thumping boots. Painfully, she raised her neck to glimpse at the invaders. They were... troopers. Stormtroopers with auto guns. Oh, not her, man. Damn, it's all to hell. She winced out. With significant effort, Mackenzie Yaws reached for her revolver. She saw that it had been flung several meters away. She turned back to see ten soldiers all pointing guns in her direction. Desperation called. The Inquisitor threw Nathaniel off of her, reached her mind to the warp, grabbing its raw power into herself. It manifested into a crackling ball of electricity in her hand. Begone, heretics! Mackenzie screamed through the pain in her chest, the power arcing toward the intruders. It got halfway until it dissipated, as if the lightning had merely been water through a sieve. Now she was panicking. Her panic compounded when the line of stormtroopers parted to reveal a short woman, the right side of her head completely augmented, her heavy black trench coat flowing as she strode forth. Held in a rest position was an artisanal shotgun, embossed with gold lettering that spelled prayers to the Emperor. Of course it was her. <laughs> Mackenzie yours. The invader began her thick Cerevisian accent layering her every word. You have been found guilty of the act of harboring heretics and interacting with the Taubrid Xenos to the detriment of the Imperium. <laughs> Brunhild Contreus! Mackenzie wheezed. Of course you would decide to invade my home on such wild charges. You think you have the right to arrest me? Kill me? I know I do, traitor, Brunhilde said flatly, walking closer to her. A wash of nausea came over Yaws, and she winced as her fellow Inquisitor came nearer. The blank knew she was causing her discomfort, but continued her encroachment. Oh, really? How in the Emperor's galaxy could you have fabricated a reason to have- We found Jacon, Yaws. That rogue traitor friend of yours happened to be transporting a squad of Astartes. Specifically, Astartes of the Amethyst Guardians. Mackenzie's face fell. I see. Does the entire library know? They do. It was by Lord Inquisitor Yoris's order that you be brought back for interrogation. Brunhilda stepped closer the aura of nausea thickening around Mackenzie as she did. She directed the shotgun at Yaws. Her organic eye flashed with malicious glee. And believe me, I will enjoy performing the interrogation. Mackenzie winced as she tried to wiggle away. She stole a glance at Nathaniel. He was deathly still, having taken the brunt of the explosion for her. However, Yaws also noticed that his left hand had pressed a rune on the device on his right wrist. One final act for his liege. The Inquisitor looked to her former colleague in the squad of stormtroopers and caught a glimpse of a shimmer behind them. Yaws smirked. Not today, you Puritan nutcase! 
Brunhilde's vicious grin fell, her brows furrowed. Then her one eye filled with shocking realization. She whipped behind her, shouldering her shotgun, as she saw five of her soldiers' heads fly into the air from a single swipe of a monomolecular blade. The other five stormtroopers jumped in surprise at the assassin that shimmered into existence. They died well, bringing their autoguns to bear and firing a few rounds. But they weren't Kalidus. The camoliolin clad woman weaved her sword through the air like an artist with a brush, spraying blood on the walls and detritus with every swipe. As they died, Brunhilde shouted, Buckshot! The shotgun whirred, changing the clip to her desired shot. It clicked, and the Inquisitor raised her barrel towards the carnage in front of her. The assassin ducked forward, thrusting her blade from below, to force the pellets to bury themselves into the wall. Her left arm shot out, flicking a dagger into her hand, which she thrust up to pierce the Inquisitor's ribs. It entered Brahilda's right side, but not with a squelch of blade into flesh but a thud and crunch of metal into metal. The Inquisitor grunted with concentrated rage, releasing the trigger of her gun to smack the assassin's face with an augmented hand. The Calidus used the momentum of the strike to swing her leg up, using her right leg to knock her opponent's gun away with her thigh and hit her face with her heel in one fluid motion. <coughs> Brunhilde stumbled back, the artisanal firearm clattering to the floor. Her training kicked in as she pulled a combat knife out of her own, just in time to desperately deflect the assassin's blade point as it thrusted towards her. The assassin did not stop, thrusting again with her dagger. Brunhilde was ready, however, reaching her right hand up to catch her assailant's wrist and squeezing with her machine-augmented strength. With a crack and a cry of pain, the Calidus dagger fell from her hand, her wrist shattered. The highly trained killer wasn't phased, bringing her right knee into the Inquisitor's left side. There she struck flesh. Despite Brunhilde's carapace-woven coat, the Calidus assassin had found a pressure point that made the Inquisitor collapse to one knee. The living weapon finally had her prey. She lifted her blade to stab through her master's foe. Brunhilde flinched. Bits of her opponent flew through the air and splattered onto her face as a bolt round entered the assassin's skull. Holding her left side, she glanced down the hall to see the kill team's tech marine, Navarre, walking down the hall, the bolt gun on his server arm smoking from the recent discharge. His power armor was covered in blood, his axe even more so. His boots thudded on the carpet as the titanic angel of death made his way towards Brunhilde. Inquisitor, he intoned. Are you injured? Brunhilde tried to stand and winced at the shock of pain on her left side. Damn that assassin. <sighs> I'll be all right. Status? The death cult assailants have been purged as per your instructions, Navarre intoned. Man-at-arms Gunther has been wounded, remains at 65% combat effectiveness. All other kill team members stand above 80%. <sighs> Good. Let's get yours into... Ugh! Throne damn it all! Brunhilde looked around at the bodies that had accumulated in the hall, and noticed that her target was not among them. <sighs> Navarre, tell the squad we need to hunt for her. She must be captured, alive! Affirmative. Mackenzie's body ached like none other. It didn't help that she was limping from her chateau and across the compound to the Voidcraft's landing pad. A rib must have broken. She could feel a pulse of pain every time she breathed. Yaws reminded herself that if she were caught, such pain would be nothing compared to what the Inquisition would do to her. With this thought... She frantically limped across the compound's rockcrete courtyard, staying close to the walls and hiding behind what cover she could. Some barrels, a stone bench around a table with an unfinished regicide board on top, the barracks. As the Inquisitor went forward to the Voidcraft pad, she witnessed the carnage the Death Watch had wrought on her men. 
Piles of bodies lay mangled on the ground, tattered limbs tossed to where the winds of war took them. Mackenzie managed to glance where her units had fought the Astartes. Both mortal blood and the bright red blood of the Astartes stained the courtyard, a splatter of gore providing the backdrop of the broken corpses of her assassins. They would be the last of her units. With her operation now known to the Inquisitors of the Library of Redemption, she would be deemed Excommunicate Traitoris. Her name struck from all Imperial records, her work in bringing the Imperium out of its blind hatred of all Xenos breeds snuffed from existence. Emperor, damn them all to the warp. How could yours of all people sanction this? He was just as radical as she was. Why send the attack dog? If they hadn't allowed that blank to enter the library's ranks, then all would have been fine. Yaws would be able to make the scars of past transgressions fade away and have... She felt him, just as he felt her. Yaws knelt with a wince behind a stack of crates, so close to the pad's ramp. Not that it would do so much good. Their librarian had reached out and touched her mind. He knew where she was. Inquisitor, Mackenzie heard him yell, I know you're there. You were ordered by the Emperor's Holy Inquisition to stand down and come in for... She didn't listen. She just needed to reach out and find him. His exact spot. Her mind crept along the Rock Creek grounds to bear witness to what tread there. The bodies, the insects, wisps of air, shell casings. There he was. She felt his boots thud on the ground. Sucking in air, she stood up, snarling. Her hand clawed and formed lightning. She saw the librarian stop in his tracks, raising his storm boulder. He never fired. Instead, he raised his hand to battle Mackenzie's electric will as it arced in jagged blue tendrils towards the space marine. Uh, by the Emperor, he was strong. He was an Astartes, after all. However, no amount of gene-forged muscle and will could stop her natural abilities. She could feel him waning as he tried to fight her attack off. She pulled back her hand, summoning two bolts at the same time. The librarian swung his arms in desperation, using the motion to help carry his own will across. Bolt after bolt slammed into his psychic shield, the lightning getting ever closer to his physical form. Yes, excellent. She could subdue him and make her getaway to the... A mass of metal slammed into her already broken chest, wrecking her concentration and throwing her onto the ground like litter from a discarded meal. She thud onto the ground with a sharp whip of pain through her body, and Mackenzie yelped, then groaned. Struggled to get a glimpse of what had just hit her. Through blurry eyes and a heavy head, she could see a thick beard surrounded by a wolf pelt. A heavy bolter now aimed squarely at her. The space wolf bared his teeth and growled. No one hurts the lion lover except me. Mackenzie barely registered what came next as pain began to overwhelm her senses. All she could hear were more footsteps and the blaring engines coming closer. One emotion came through the haze as she meekly realized she had been caught. Fear. Thank you for listening to this Coffee Hound Creatives production. Narration in All Space Marines performed by James Reese. Mackenzie Yaws performed by Overdose of Sound. Brunhilde Contreras performed by Neff Lee. Pilot, Sergeant, Nathaniel, and Corporal Gerald all played by S.J. Harris. Title card and video image created by Rachel Lindemann. If you enjoyed the works of these wonderful artists, you can hire them for your own projects. Look in the description for their relevant links. 
And if you like this particular story, give it a like and subscribe for more stories just like this. And remember, the Emperor protects.